Okay, uh, thanks for the invitation. Uh, thanks especially for giving both of us a uh, chance to speak on the same topic so we can actually get somewhere. Um, also, before I actually start my talk, uh, following Emily, actually I want to advertise to our two workshops that I've been uh, co-organizing. Uh, this workshop, I mean, what happened like this year, uh, this workshop is to understand uh, conform field theory and the relation to vertex algebras and chiral algebras. Uh, it's mostly for, say, graduate students. And this one is kind of the trying to understand uh, general QFT formalism from sort of the from a mathematical perspective. And this is mo mostly for researchers, but uh, everyone is welcome to apply for the workshops. Okay. So, as I said, uh, everything I'm going to say is uh, joint work with uh, Justin Hilburn. Right. So, and, and we are trying to relate these two different subjects. So, but these two subjects are pretty big subjects uh, themselves. So, my talk is basically going to be introduction to sort of the uh, general ideas, and Justin will talk about some kind of more more concrete examples as well. So, it's going to be consisting of uh, several different levels of introduction. Okay. So, let me start with the big picture. Uh, first of all, we want to relate these two subjects. By the way, maybe I should say that uh, these two subjects, in a sense, uh, belong to this field called the uh, geometric representation theory. But somehow, I, I want to emphasize sort of the relation to physics for this talk. So I'm going to certainly say words from this uh, uh, field of geometric representation theory. But even if you don't follow that part, I hope you can sort of uh, understand some ideas, general ideas of the uh, subject that we are <coughs> studying. So we want to relate these two subjects. And first idea uh, is to use physics. And uh, the relevant physics are uh, what is called 3D n equal 4 theory and 4D n equal 4 gauge theory. And there have been some work relating uh, these subjects. Let me just mention some of them. Uh, so blue things are mostly physics work and reds are uh, kind of mathematical work. So these blue works are kind of finding some like relation between these two uh, different looking subjects, one mathematical subject and one physical subject, uh, like using physical ideas. And these uh, red, red ones are uh, giving some kind of mathematical way to understand uh, these physical objects. And these red ones actually have found something that uh, these physicists uh, didn't really realize. So it's, it, it certainly has some kind of the, it's not just kind of translation, uh, they have more to say. So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is that to relate this symplectic duality and geometric Langlands, uh, the idea now is uh, to relate these uh, uh, physical theories. And uh, Gayot and Witten have related these two physical subjects. And then the natural idea is, of course, to put like red box somewhere here, so that as a correlate, we are going to get some relation between these two. Theory means what theory? Case theory or what theory? There is case theory. What is this theory? Not, not necessarily. <coughs> so what is the theory means? I mean, I'm, theory what? Feel, I mean, this is her first introduction. Essentially, my talk consists of like four different levels of introductions. Somewhere along the line, I'm going to say what I mean by theory, kind of slightly better than this. So, okay. Any other questions? Right, so we, we found sort of the relation between these uh, physical theories, and uh, as a correlate, we, we some got, get some relations between these two methodical subjects, and Bromerman and Finkelberg also found some uh, relationship between these two subjects as well. Okay. So this is, I think, the end of the first introduction. I think this was clear to everyone. <laughs> so let's increase the difficulty a bit. Uh, it's hard to say, like, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I, I want to say a, a bit about uh, what we are doing actually. Um, so first of all, let me say that, uh, that there are several like vocabulary we, we need to work with. Uh, quantization just means, uh, I mean, given up sort of input data, I, I think of classical field theory. And for classical field theory, I, I care about, say, 
uh, solutions to equations motion. Um, and the second part, uh, second vocabulary I want to explain is uh, this notion of twisting. Uh, it means that <coughs> starting with uh, supersymmetric field theory, uh, there is this procedure called twisting, which is supposed to be uh, extracting some, some parts, a uh, sector of the theory, uh, which is kind of simpler, but more manageable. Uh, and the famous example is this uh, 2D n equal 2, 2. Uh, It has two distinct topological twists called the A model and B model. So given, say, Calabria manifold X, uh, it defines sort of two different topological theories. And I can denote that by AX or BX. And third, duality. Uh, by duality, I mean sort of the identification between two different, two different looking QFTs. So anything you can kind of reasonably extract uh, from QFT should be identified. That's uh, what I, like roughly what I mean. So uh, the example here is the uh, mirror symmetry. The statement is that for given Calabria manifold, there is a dual Calabria manifold such that this AX is basically the same in this sense uh, to, to this uh, BX check. And examples, uh, this growth within invariance, like curve counting invariance is same as some kind of periods of uh, original hot structures. And kind of, uh, th there is another kind of stronger conjecture due to Konsevich, uh, homological mirror symmetry is uh, expecting some equivalence between two categories. Could you clarify what you mean by quantization? In uh, not, not, not here. So it's, uh, again, it's only the second introduction. Okay. Like, I, I get there. Okay. <laughs> okay. So from here, like, uh, we, uh, maybe starting some like, less dark uh, <laughs> thing. So I described this uh, procedure of twisting and, say, quantization. And what I mean by that is uh, precisely, I guess, uh, fitting in this kind of table. So uh, from here to here is twisting, from here to here is uh, quantization. And you know, our interest is to understand the relation to say geometric representation theory. Uh, and this subject is uh, mostly ar algebraic. And you know, supersymmetric field theory, uh, physics kind of starts with uh, say differential geometric data and usually it, it as given, it's not really kind of the, I mean, it, it is of course relevant, but it's hard to kind of extract this algebraic information right away from this given field theory data. And uh, if you do this uh, twist, for example, topological twist, then it becomes simpler. And sometimes it can be uh, understood in an algebraic way. And that kind of fits into this subject called the shifted symplectic geometry. Uh, and Quantization, I, I could mean a few different things, but in this case, uh, I mean some kind of geometric quantization. And as a result, I expect to see some sort of topological quantum field theory. Okay, then given this, uh, one can kind of proceed as follows. First of all, uh, we understand classical field theory, namely try to identify the moduli space of solutions to the equations motion. And claim is that uh, in nice cases, including ours, our cases are in our interest, can be understood in terms of shifted symplectic geometry. Uh, second, understand sort of the, this procedure of quantization. Uh, this kind of is going to be categorified version of geometric quantization. And we are not the first to uh, think about this subject. What is EOM? I, I mean the moduli space of solutions to equations of motion. Just, I mean, but what do, what do these letters stand for? Equation of motion. Uh, equations of motion. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, has been done by uh, several people, Chris Rogers, Pavel Safronov, uh, Ruth Schreiber, and James Rebridge. And we have learned a lot from uh, Pavel, actually, in particular. Okay. And the third part uh, is once you understand this, uh, now you can try to understand the consequences of the duality that say physicists uh, studied. And if you apply this idea, then you are going to find some new conjectures and one can try to prove them. Okay. 
So in a certain sense, uh, our sort of the main contribution is more, more to uh, making a framework for this one and two. And I think, uh, in a sense, I think uh, Sasha's last talk kind of is more, more like kind of the, the third part. I think the consequence of duality, find the conjectures, and then uh, prove uh, the conjecture. Okay, so in my talk, I'm going to sort of uh, give basic ideas of these two different subjects and uh, say a bit about like what kind of thing is happening from this uh, general picture. Okay, I think this is the end of the second introduction. Any, I think this much is also kind of fine. Uh, duality is extremely general. Can you restrict the, the meaning of duality? I, I mean, like I'm, it's hard, hard to say somehow I think for us, like we are going to work with particular sort of the example of duality, and I think that's going to be fine. Like, if you have, I don't know, I don't know what kind of answer you, you want. Is electromagnetic as duality the context of this one? In, in this context, yes. Yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah. Any other question? Did you define what is symplectic duality? Right. Yeah, we'll, we'll come later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe there's some <laughs> 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 Okay, any other? Okay, and, and of course Justin is going to explain more about. Uh, oh. Mouse. Yes. Sorry. Okay. Okay, so uh, let's just cut up the, let, let me just mention that uh, what's kind of new uh, from our work, uh, we've certainly find some uh, new relationship between these two subjects. And along the way, we studied sort of the, say, line operators of this reading anchor four theory. And uh, forthcoming work of uh, Tudor Neofthen, Nick Garner, and Justin Hilber uh, is actually kind of investigating that like, much deeply. Um, and um, also, we find some kind of enrichment of simplex duality. Uh, but I'm not really going to talk about that. And we also find some new conjectures for local limit and long lines. Uh, and like kind of one example uh, is a description of the corner for local limit and long lines. And I would say like the, in the sense like Sasha described yesterday, it's uh, like 99% due to 99.9 .9 due to Gaiota Witten. Uh, but I, my understanding is that actually Sasha and I think Kilberg are trying to prove some version of this, like GR2. Like there is some, some I think, progress, I think, there. Okay. <laughs> okay. I can neither confirm nor deny. Okay, okay. Um, and uh, we, we also have some kind of exciting examples uh, using sort of ideas from uh, string theory. And Justin is going to talk uh, <coughs> a bit about this. And uh, it's one, one thing I, just, I want to say is that uh, this is sort of not, not kind of translation of the, the result. We are kind of, the, in a sense, kind of setting a framework of, of uh, what physicists uh, have been doing, in a sense. And I think Justin kind of will, will explain uh, more about this. I think along, like, the, to explain this uh, string theory and debris manipulation, I think he's going to uh, explain sort of what I mean by this thing. And as I said, somehow, uh, setting this framework uh, seems to be kind of useful in the sense that Sometimes we are seeing something that like physicists didn't really like realize or think about. And in a sense, sort of the most exciting part is uh, this uh, categorified geometric quantization. Uh, it seems to be working in a much bigger generality than sort of the, this examples we, we are going to consider today. Um, but again, we are not really going to talk too much about this part. Okay, so now it's really sort of in the beginning of the third introduction. Uh, so symplectic duality, again, I, I, as I said, I don't really expect everything in these slides and uh, to be really understandable to everyone, but that's fine. So let me start. So uh, Braden, Ricardo, Proud, Food, and Webster made a conjecture called the symplectic duality. It says that uh, for certain dual pairs of algebraic symplectic varieties, M and M shrink, uh, there is an equivalence between uh, two module categories, some sort of the module categories of the uh, deformation quantization. Kind of satisfying a lot of other properties. 
Um, and examples uh, include this uh, cotangent bundle of flag variety and the uh, dual groups, and also fever varieties and uh, slices of fine grass manure. It's a pretty non-trivial uh, duality. And, and it kind of re relates to several different subject, several different objects in uh, geometrical presentation theory in, in, in this way. Uh, but then, uh, like physicists realized, say Gukov, I think Gukov was the first one, uh, observed that uh, this mathematical duality uh, seems to have to do with uh, some physical duality. So in particular, sort of the, uh, there is this uh, 3D equal 4 theory, and for a given theory, there are what is called Higgs branch and Coulomb branch, and he observed that these pairs seem to be coinciding uh, with these pairs, known pairs. I think this actually appears in also in Gayot and Witten actually before all these works in symplectic duality. I mean, Gayot and Witten discussed symplectic duality before symplectic duality was ever discussed. Oh, is that right? I mean, it so depends what you mean. Like, they identified like the two dual pairs of varieties, but they had never I think discussed right, the like modules. I think that's where Braden, like, the prof, and the was actually based on Gayot, was motivated by Gayot and Witten. Uh, I'm sure it's not, because, I mean, because Nick didn't know, like, about Gayot and Witten. Like, like, I mean, I'm just saying, like, so nobody had ever talked about those module categories. No, I'm not talking about module, but about the idea of, well, okay, it's not, it's not, but... Yeah, yeah like that. So by, by simplex duality, I mean this, uh, this thing. With kind of the, a lot of kind of addition. And the M's and M shrieks had been identified before. Yes, that's what I mean. But, but that's not what I mean by... Uh, but the module category equivalents had not been predicted before. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Uh, so there is another point of view uh, of 3D mirror symmetry. Uh, it's sort of kind of the duality between uh, two different uh, 3D equal four theory, and in, in this way. So theory T has dual theory T shrink, and Higgs branch and Coulomb branch are kind of the swapped under this duality. Okay, so I want to say a bit about this 3D equal four theory, uh, but just purely in terms of sort of input data and sort of outputs. So input data, uh, three and four gauge theory, input data is a uh, group G and uh, symplectic space with a Hamiltonian G action. So for example, uh, given a group G and linear representation V, you can think of cotangent bundle and that defines a theory which I denote by uh, T of G V. Uh, then outputs are affine algebraic symplectic varieties uh, Higgs branch, which is defined in this way. So just uh, this Hamiltonian action, you have moment map, so you can define this way. And in this particular case, it's easy to identify in this way. And Chrome branch, uh, this is kind of the foundational work of, uh, for everyone thinking about Nakajima, uh, BFN, uh, identifying uh, this as a spectrum of some commutative ring. But this commutative ring is kind of the non-trivial object. Uh, this is sort of the part that I don't really expect people to follow, but let me kind of read briefly. Uh, it is some certain kind of the uh, map to affine Grassmannian, and you take some equivariant uh, homology. And in particular, when this uh, representation is zero, then uh, this is just kind of same as affine Grassmannian. And what I mean by this object is just uh, becoming homology of uh, bungee of the bubble. So G bundles on the bubble, and this, the bubble is defined as a gluing of two disks along sort of the punctual disk. So it's kind of the usual object in geometrical representation theory. And uh, because of the geometry of bubble, uh, it does have usual convolution product. And using that, like you can prove this is commutative and then you can take spectrum. And then it gives uh, a fine variety. And that's the definition of Coulomb branch. So that's that. And once you have this definition, then you can try to prove this uh, simple duality. And indeed, uh, Ben Webster proved this uh, Simplectic duality in this case, say for the case when T is TGV, given as uh, in this way, with this input data of G and representation V, simplectic duality holds. Okay, so let me say a bit more about sort of the physics of what's going on. Uh, Higgs branch are sort of parts of what is called the modular vacua, and modular vacua is kind of the Hard, hard object to describe in general. But uh, the point is that, as I kind of hinted, uh, our interest is kind of the 
at the end of the day, kind of the algebraic things. So presumably, like the, we can try to understand this uh, Higgs branch and Coulomb branch after some kind of the twist, right? The relevant information should be sort of the visible for after this tw twist anyway, and twist is going to make things simpler. So why don't you just take twist? And that's what we do. And uh, what one means by twist uh, in this uh, TQFT, uh, it's kind of clear. You can define that uh, modular vacua is uh, roughly as a spectrum of some commutative ring, which is given by uh, what you assign to n minus one sphere. But now you've shifted your sort of perspective on what a field theory is. Or so, so now you're using a sort of functorial. Yes, yes. I mean, it's still an introduction, uh, third level, but yes. What do you mean by the location? Is it of uh, so, so TKFT is kind of functor. Is this less than the oh. location for TKFT? Yes, yes. Uh, Z is a functor. So this is going to be a vector space. And it has some, some algebra structure coming from this uh, configuration of spheres. And uh, I think of that as computer product and then takes back. OK. Then. Uh, it is uh, known that uh, this 3 d four theory has, again, two twists, A twists and B twists, in such a way that uh, if you compute kind of the modular vacua following this description, then A twist is exactly giving sort of the Coulomb branch, and B twist is giving uh, Higgs branch. And, and indeed, one can kind of the, uh, argue following this physics uh, uh, expectation, you can see sort of the Coulomb branch and Higgs branch. So here comes. You said earlier who did some of these this sort of work. So where is the Z A and Z B written down? Who's described? That? No, it's not really sort of like written down in this way. Yeah. Then is this a kind of filtered algebras? Which one is? Is this Z, uh, is this algebras which you consider it's not? It's kind of limits of finite dimensional spaces. Z A of sphere. First of all, like uh, this is like still not like what we are actually doing, like the, for many different reasons. So we don't necessarily care about like what, what it is. Uh, it's a... Uh, because if it's inductive limit of finite dimensional space, it's naturally gives some kind of filtration and structure of algebraic variety. Otherwise, uh, this is a non-compact complex variety can have different algebraic structures. Right, right. Uh, and there's also some kind of filtration that can follow dimension. Uh, if it has good provided image. I don't... I don't really know, and uh, again, I, let me say that we are like not really actually using this TKFT uh, formalism. Uh, we are doing something kind of. Uh, what, what is the question? Of why is it? I mean, do you want to ask why this algebra is finally generated? Or, or? Yeah. yeah. Oh, for, 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 wait. Even, uh, kind of. In principle, this is kind of nuclear space, whatever this is. Yeah. But it's naturally because of control uh, which provide limited filter by finite dimensional space, and then we get future algebras by finding the machine that algebraic structure. Well, I mean, I think in the cases when you can actually define these things, it's kind of happens to be more or less on the nose. Yeah. <coughs> but I don't think it is an a priori argument why it should be so. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Okay. So now we can sort of the, this is sort of the uh, giving some idea of what we do. So um, this Coulomb branch algebra as defined, uh, functions on that is actually by definition is computed in this way. You know, homology or cohomology is, uh, you can think of that as a hum, hum space of sheaves, and which means that you can write in this way. So sheaves on this, uh, say, constructible sheaves on this bungee of the bubble, and it's a dualizing sheaf, and this is some, some certain sheaf. And I want to uh, explain sort of the, in a sense, this, this equality can be understood as a, a two different interpretation of a single physical system. So consider a four-dimensional TQFT. Uh, if you want, it, you can think of that as a sort of the, some, some, some version of a twist of uh, for the n core four theory, topological. And you can like the, you can try to understand what you assign to s two times the interval. 
So, you know, this is kind of three manifold. Uh, it behaves like three manifold once you choose, say, boundary conditions at those two points. And you expect to see some kind of vector space. And this is the claim. Uh, this 4D TKFD, what you assign to this uh, S2 times 0, 1, can be read uh, in two different ways. Uh, first of all, kind of the think of this uh, complete equation uh, along this direction. And second, maybe this direction. And that's kind of the two different interpretation of this uh, configuration. So let me see what, what I mean by this. So first of all, the first point of view, uh, you are kind of the compactifying along interval with two given boundary conditions, and you get a 3D, 3D theory. And it is known that uh, by kind of the choice of boundary conditions, you can actually get 3D theory, say A twist, TKFT, uh, written in this way. You know, if you remember TGV, that can be realized as uh, by choosing the two boundary conditions and then do this kind of the pr reduction procedure. Then local operators there, uh, this is local operator for 3D theory, right? What you assign to S2, and that can be identified, uh, it's a sort of by the physics I, I mentioned, uh, we, this is supposed to be the same as uh, algebras on the Coulomb branch. And the second point of view is uh, once you think in this way, what you assign to S2, uh, it's uh, either sort of a category line operators or kind of the compactified boundary conditions. And this B0 and B2, B1 uh, are defining object of this category. And in this way, uh, this is recovering that. So I'm saying that this equality uh, the first one is actually really kind of the first interpretation. The second one is from this sec uh, second interpretation. So this definition. What's B and Bungie B? So B is a formal bubble. It's a gluing of uh, two discs along uh, punctured discs. Just right on the border. Sure. <laughs> you should play draw a picture. And So this, this, but it is kind of glued. Ah, but it's a secretly three-dimensional ball with uh, minus point and collation is transversal. Yes, 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 yes. That's a very good mm -hmm. Any other questions? Right. So essentially, it's a fine Grassmannian with the equivalent sort of the. Yes, that's right. That's right. What do you mean? Like this? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> right. So, uh, so this is really kind of the work of uh, BFN, and uh, this is our interpretation of this uh, BFN, namely 3D local operators, say Coulomb branch from this uh, 4D, uh, say line operators. But given this, you can try to understand sort of the uh, 3D line operators from this 4D surface operators. So that's at least kind of one, one piece of uh, uh, an idea. Okay. What is line operator? Oh, put in defect on the line. Okay. In in this language, uh, sort of the uh, for four D theory, what you assign to S two, uh, one can think of this that there is a collection of line operators. Uh, yes. So is a line extending along this interval? I mean, sort of the, so, so when I say 3D line, I already kind of used up this. 4D line of. So, so, so I'm saying that uh, this uh, B0 and B1 are uh, boundary conditions. But you can think of that as a line operator. I mean, it's kind of general uh, mm -hmm. thing. And yeah, it's uh, yeah. So what is local, 3D local means? Uh, local operators. Like the Coulomb branches are really kind of the uh, spectrum of local operators. And I'm saying that it's a local. Huh? Just get the point. Yeah. 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 Yes. OK. Any other questions? OK. So this is sort of the end of the third, in third level introduction. Uh, sort of the, we interpret this uh, work of BFN uh, in this kind of the Giving, by giving two different interpretation, and from that point of view, uh, you can sort of do a bit more. Okay. 
Now, uh, I, I st let me start uh, sort of the introduction to geometry Langlands. And uh, again, like the, you don't really need to understand uh, much here, just, just to say kind of what kind of thing we are doing. Um, so uh, again, kind of the input data uh, are, say, compact ground surface and a group like GLN. And, and you, you also have a Langlands zero group. Then uh, geometry Langlands correspondence uh, expects an equivalence between two categories. And a uh, well-known version is uh, what is called the best top. Uh, it, it says like this. Let me read. Uh, it's a D modules on modulate space of G bundles on uh, this Riemann surface C. And quasi coherent trees on the modulate space flat connections on G check, uh, G check flat connections on this uh, Riemann surface C. It's an uh, equivalence between these two different categories. Okay, so that's it for Jumte Langlands. Uh, now, like one slide for Kapos Witten. Um, so, S duality of this uh, 4D n equal 4 supersymmetric gauge theories uh, it's, uh, gives, gives this version of Jumte Langlands. That's sort of the claim, main claim of uh, Kapos and Witten. And it's uh, like follows. So, gauge theory with gauge group G uh, has like P1 many twists. And coupled with some kind of the additional parameter, it's actually parameterized by uh, this parameter C as an element of CP1. So in the same way as like AX defines sort of the A model with a target X uh, to the, uh, this A, mo A model, uh, GPC uh, sort of specifies a 4D TQFT. And second, S duality is uh, known to identify, namely kind of the under duality, uh, these two different TQFTs. And third, uh, compactification along this uh, compact ground surface C. Uh, and if you pick particular C, say zero and infinity, then it is known that uh, it's an equivalence between these two different 2D theories, duality between them. A model with the target uh, cotangent model upon G, and B model with the target sort of the modular space of flat connections. Then uh, if you apply sort of the homological mirror symmetry, then uh, it is actually, one can argue that these A brains are close enough to these D modules and B brains are like the quasi coherent shifts. So you would expect to see some kind of equivalence. So you, you get a, a best of version conjecture. Uh, of course, like mathematically, like the, a lot of parts are kind of uh, missing. Uh, kind of maybe most important one is the dependence on C is kind of the topological, whereas uh, geometry Langlands really care about say complex structure or algebraic structure of this C. So I, I'm going to say more about that a bit later. Um, but before getting there, uh, I want to say a few words about sort of the framework we are working with. Namely, this, uh, how we understand this classical field theory as an object of sort of the shift simplex geometry. So uh, field theory uh, is uh, given in this way. So I have space-time manifold, space of fields, and action function. Um, then what you care at, at the level of classical field theory is really sort of the, this uh, modular space solutions to equations motion. So sometimes I use the notation critical S if I want to emphasize this S, and sometimes I, I write so EOM of M when, when I want to emphasize sort of the space-time uh, dependence. That's just a notation. An example is the uh, Chern-Simon theory. If you have three manifold, uh, one form with a, a real algebra value uh, fields and action function are given in this way, then you can check that critical locus actually kind of the, uh, cut out sort of the flat connections. Okay, and now I want to say a bit about uh, derived geometry. And uh, just like a scheme is a functor in this sense, a derived stack is a functor you know, sort of the derived sense. And it's, again, kind of not too important to know what, what exactly uh, these things are. Uh, but just to give a concrete model, for derived rings, you can think of that as a sort of the CDGAs, uh, non-positively graded. Uh, derived sets, you can think of that as a simple sets or even sort of the topological spaces. Uh, what's more important is to understand examples. And user schemes or stack uh, is a derived stack, in particular, uh, this BG classifying stack is a, a derived stack. And for given derived stack, you can define sort of the shifted cotangent bundle. 
uh, in this way. So if you if you know sort of the usual definition of cotangent bundle in this way, uh, it presumably kind of seems pretty natural. You take symmetric algebra of linear zero of the fiber, and that's how you get. And this Tx is a tangent complex, sort of the derived version of the tangent tangent bundle. And one thing that's kind of fun about this uh, subject is that uh, a topological space can be understood as an object of this uh, subject. Namely, uh, you know, for to define this uh, functor, you just need to uh, understand sort of the assignment uh, of uh, derived sets to derived rings. So given topological space, I can define what is called the Betty step. So this S is a derived ring, and what, what you are giving is just M. You just forget about, like, ignore, like, whatever you are eating, this derived ring, and then just kind of keep your step back. And that's uh, what I mean by the Betty step. So Betty step defines a functor, and it is a derived step. Okay, and uh, mapping stack, uh, I think this is uh, sort of basically the same as the classical definition. Uh, for a given derived stacks, you can define this mapping stack in this way. Okay, so now, now I, I want to explain sort of the relation between these two subjects, uh, derived algebraic geometry and classical field theory. And the point is, uh, once you are in this uh, subject of derived geometry, uh, you, you cannot really like use equalities in the way you, you have used, I guess. Uh, in, in this particular case of classical field theory, the equation you cared about is uh, this ds being zero. And that you can read as an intersection, namely fiber product of this uh, uh, graph and zero section uh, sitting inside cotangent bundle. Um, so you, you'd write the critical locus as a tensor product, the structure shift thereof. But in this derived world, you, you just kind of think of uh, derived tensor product. And, and that just amounts to actually uh, keeping track of sort of the homotopy information of how exactly this ds is zero. So just to give an idea, uh, let me give an exercise. Uh, let's say so x is, I don't know, like smooth manifold, like affine algebraic variety, and you can try to compute uh, this resolution, then you actually end up with uh, this thing, structure shift of minus one shift cotangent bundle uh, with some differential. And in special case, when s is zero, so action function is say zero, uh, then you can find this Kozul resolution using this uh, natural map. And after taking cohomology, they kind of the cancel out. So you end up with this OX. And, and using this uh, resolution, uh, if you cancel out this uh, OTX and sim, sim, sim of this TX, then you would end up with uh, this part, which gives the uh, minus one shifted cotangent bundle. So it's a kind of good, good exercise uh, to do if you haven't done it. And uh, this feature of having uh, some sort of minus one shift simplex structure is expected from the classical PV formalism. I think we have seen examples uh, from the OS talk as well. Okay, any questions? So shifty simplex structure. Um, so th th these parts are like, going to be sort of used in uh, crucially in, in Justin's talk. So let me say a few words about the subject. Uh, so a fundamental definition was made by uh, Pantep, Twen, Bucky, and Bejosi, uh, PTVB. And symplectic structure uh, on a derived stack is given by a two form, but now of commercial degree n, in the sense that, like, you know, usually kind of you, you'd expect to uh, see that uh, this induced map is giving identification between tangent bundle and cotangent bundle. But as I said, the tangent, tangent complex is a derived version of the tangent bundle. So it's uh, like a cochain complex as opposed to vector, vector space. So it, it makes sense to uh, shift things around and still expect to see some kind of uh, identification. And with this N shift, uh, if this is uh, identification, then this, uh, this such an omega is uh, N shift symplectic structure. And uh, the shifted cotangent bundle, as expected, has an N shifted uh, symplectic structure. Uh, I guess this is non-trivial result of Damian, actually. Uh, like, I mean, it's uh, expected, I guess, always, but uh, uh, reductive group uh, classifying stack is a uh, two-shifted, uh, and, and you can kind of easily see that uh, if you understand tangent bundle of BG, which is uh, G-shift by one, then to have 
sort of equivalence between this G1 and its linear dual, only with the degree shifting 2, it's uh, uh, identified. And that, that, is, that too is exactly sort of the why this BG is a uh, two shift disinfecting. So symmetric invariant violin form is giving an identification of these two things, and that's two shift disinfecting structure. And uh, like important parts of this uh, subject is, of course, it's a simplex geometry. So like the notion of Lagrangians are uh, like is kind of absolutely important. Uh, but uh, instead of giving sort of formal definition, let me just kind of observe that uh, examples are like as expected. Sort of the general section is Lagrangian, like things like uh, yeah, graph of is Lagrangian, and this uh, co shifted co-normal is a Lagrangian. Okay. Um, and some of the main theorems of PTVBs are, are about uh, producing these uh, shifted simplex structures. And they, they are going to be used in, uh, in a sort of the crucial way uh, for, for us. Um, one, one theorem is uh, what is called the Lagrangian intersection theorem. Uh, it says that given this n shifted simplex object uh, and two, two Lagrangians, uh, by taking intersection, you actually uh, get a n minus one shift symplectic structure. Uh, so in, in this sense, uh, the derived critical locus that that being minus one shift symplectic can be explained because it was an intersection of graph and zero section, which are Lagrangians of this cotangent bundle. Uh, another important uh, uh, theorem is uh, what is called the AKC PTBB. Uh, and in this case, uh, it's kind of the, about giving a, a shifted simplex structure on this mapping step. And when X has an M orientation, I mean, I'm going to explain a bit about what I mean by this. And, and, one, and Y is N shifted symplectic. This mapping stack is M minus M shifted symplectic. So let me give an idea. Orientation, uh, if you want, you can just think of that as a, like the information of fundamental class. So let me explain this uh, with examples. So if M is a closed oriented D manifold, then fundamental class is uh, giving D orientation. Uh, just because uh, it's giving this uh, map. And from there, I can define this uh, mapping stack. And now I want to use this uh, AKC PTVB sort of uh, theorem. So BG was two shift symplectic, and this MB is uh, D-oriented. So if you use sort of the theorem, uh, this is N minus M sort of the shifted, and this is two, this is D, so you are actually getting two minus D shifted symplectic. So in particular, if M was a uh, two-manifold, you are recovering sort of the usual symplectic structure on this uh, modular space local systems. And uh, more examples, when X is a smooth proper scheme of dimension D, then you can define two uh, objects, what's called the Dorbo stack and drum stack. Uh, like roughly, you can think of Dorbo stack as sort of the uh, thing your structure, where your structure shift looks like uh, uh, algebraic drum forms. Maybe in smooth category, it looks like a Dorbo complex. And drum, drum stack is uh, more like kind of the, you, you actually have a drum complex with the algebraic drum differential. And uh, you can kind of the convince yourself that uh, that gives a 2D orientation, uh, each of them. And using that, you can kind of the induce shifted symplectic structure on this moduli space. So moduli of Higgs bundles uh, is, can be defined as a mapping stack from X Dorbo to BG. And moduli of flat connections, algebraic flat connections, can be defined in this way. And uh, in the case where they can be compared to sort of the, the usual definitions, you can check that they kind of the, uh, coincide. Namely, sort of when, say, D, D is 1, D is 1. In this case, so moduli space of Higgs bundles on a curve. And modular flat connections on a curve, uh, they have the uh, simplex, usual simplex structure, and that's same as the one uh, we are getting here. Okay, and using this sort of the language, you can write down sort of the uh, this EOM uh, in this way. So, so Calabria, given a Calabria manifold, uh, let's say like if I care about this uh, 2D theory B model, like B comma Y. Uh, it has this AKC description uh, given in this way. 
So in particular, if you, if you have sort of the two manifold, you are actually getting sort of the minus one shift disimplectic structure as expected, so like close to manifold. And 3D churn Simons, let's say complex churn Simons, uh, then like mapping stack to BG, also if you think of sort of the close three manifold, uh, you get this minus one shift disimplectic structure as expected. Okay, so now, now let me say a bit about this uh, 4D and equal 4 gauge theory. Uh, you can actually compute uh, these uh, solutions to equations of motion as an object of shift simplex geometry. So this uh, holomorphic twist, uh, so the so left-hand side kind of has a, a meaning. It, it is sort of the so solutions to this uh, holomorphic, what is called the holomorphic twist of this 4D and equal 4 theory. And, uh, and I'm trying to identify what it is. And the theorem, the content is that it can be identified with uh, the right-hand side. So as expected, you, you see T star minus one, which is minus one shift symplectic, which is expected from this classical BV formalism. And you can write in, in a, a few different ways. And, and these two are sort of the some, some ways. Um, but somehow, cases of interest uh, mo mostly are uh, this case when your algebraic surface can be written as uh, sigma times C. In this case, uh, let me write down sort of the, let me kind of record what's happening for the other twist. This HT stands for holomorphic topological twist. And you can identify sort of the equations of motion in this way. So holomorphic topological is called so because uh, dependence on C is kind of more like holomorphic and dependence on sigma is more like kind of topological. And uh, by B, like you can compute this B twist and A twist. And let me say that uh, this notation is kind of the maybe possibly a little un unconventional because uh, I mean, it's, it's even actually different from like what we wrote in, in, the, in the paper. I'm just kind of choosing, have made the choice of this notation because that's kind of the easier to use for our purpose. Uh, so this A twist is actually different from sort of the Kapus <coughs> uh, Witten's twist. And uh, another, th another thing to note is that we are actually seeing a modular space of flat connections as opposed to a modular space of local systems. And that actually says something. So, you know, we, we are kind of working with a, a topological twist and topological twist is expected to sort of the give a topological theory. But my claim is that uh, this actually does see some kind of algebraic or complex structure dependence on, on C. Uh, does this twist exist only when X is of that product? Uh, some of them, yes. Like, like this. Of course, this is the case, and uh, this A twist as well. B, B twist makes sense like oh, earlier. Yeah. Yes. Now we are so careful, so maybe in geometric condensation should abandon the log system, local, local system, because what they usually use the RAM model. Yeah. Yes, yeah, this is kind of, I'm, 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 yeah. that's right, like what I'm saying is that uh, if you do Kapus and Witten theory kind of in a careful way, mm -hmm. actually looks like the, uh, uh, this is kind of the one natural model we are kind of naturally seeing. Yeah. Because uh, actually we, we are seeing this Higgs moduli as a sort of the first step, and this uh, things are realized a further twist, namely deformation of Higgs moduli, and then it's like just flat G, not, not log G. Yeah. So we are really seeing sort of the algebraic structures. Yeah, but I think it's impossible to change it. I mean, I mean, it's as long as it's just, I mean, local systems means that there no, are no. local systems by definition. No, 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 it's your work when you use wrong notation, but it's kind of confusing. No, no I mean, it's not my, my notation, I mean, just everybody. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's uh, in this sense, it's traditional traditions, it's this group of... Just the point that people working, if people work in geometric language, uh, co topology and complex numbers in principle does not exist. So yes, yes. nothing, <laughs> nothing non-algebraic in principle yeah, okay, is allowed. Yeah, yeah, ignore all the bit in geometry, okay, it's, <laughs> but it's... Uh, but Betty geometry is also kind of pretty fun, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's... Uh, it, it, it is things which you uh, so be seen to ignore, yeah. Right. Yeah. But somehow, like from our uh, framework, it seems kind of the fletchy is kind of the naturally appearing. Okay. Uh, if you are a physicist, maybe you, you may ask, like, the, we did take topological twists. How can you see topological structures? Uh, I mean, non topological structures, uh, like, namely algebraic structures. And the claim is that. Uh, 
you know, to political twist, if you think about the process, it's kind of really kind of the trivialization of infinitesimal transformations. And if you know sort of the definition of drum step, uh, it's exactly identifying this, uh, like trivializing this infinitesimal translation. So that, that information is captured by having sort of the drum, uh, uh, drum sort of step. And, and from, from this, as I kind of hinted, uh, you can actually, like by understanding this uh, uh, procedure and trying to understand this, uh, say, couples meeting theory, uh, in our own way, actually, we, we, we seem to be getting some new structures in geometry Langland theory, but that, that's not a topic for today. Okay. So, next part uh, is uh, this uh, categorified geometry quantization, and it is really, really a thing. And as I said, like the, these people have done like uh, a lot of kind of interesting, exciting work. But I, I want to mention this uh, is a science because. Uh, what I'm going to, uh, what I'm about to say is like doesn't really maybe look like science, uh, but it's just because it's kind of the like fourth level of introduction. Like if I'm, if I have like, more time, like, I would have done more. And like, Justin actually is going to make this more kind of science looking. No, I'm not. Huh? No, I'm not. I had two talks. Oh uh, right. Yeah. Okay. So even fifth introduction doesn't. It's not enough to. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. But uh. Right. So. Uh, so it, it's kind of the in this kind of naive uh, uh, sense. It goes as follows: so you identify this equations of motion. You can identify in this way. So equations of motion um, can be defined on sort of the any submanifold. Say in this Fourier theory, kind of the any kind of the submanifold of this uh, four manifold, uh, and equations of motion on this uh, curve C is uh, expected to be one shift symplectic and one can identify that in this way, t star 1 of the drum cycle of 1g and t star 1 of flat moduli. But if you know sort of the usual geometric quantization, when you have, say, cotangent bundle, uh, the way you, you get the Hilbert space is taking functions on the base. That's sort of the naive thing you can do. And uh, this category of geometric quantization, categorified geometric quantization to get something like the TQFT, uh, you take sheaves on the base. So functions and sections of the line bundle of a But Right, but what I'm saying is that if you start with the cotangent bundle. Yeah, it says you took the sections. Yeah. No, no. So functions. I'm, I'm being like really naive here. Like as I said, like that this can be done kind of in a more, in a much better way. I'm trying to be naive. Flat sections of the bundle on T star and they're flat along the fibers. So it ends up being a okay. Right. Uh, and from this, we actually get sort of the D modules on Bungi and quasi coherent shifts on the uh, flat G check. Uh, but the thing is that uh, this logic kind of the follows through for the this case of having S1, so it's a one manifold, and by S1 in our algebraic framework, uh, we actually mean sort of the punctual disk, and you actually get T star two of uh, drum cycle Bungi and T star two flat, and if you take sort of the kind of the two categorical version of these functions. Uh, this is kind of what Sasha kind of the described, some sort of sheaves of category, and that's how you get uh, expected sort of the categories to categories of interest for the A side and B side. And so expected equivalence between these two things uh, is a local geometry Langlands statement. And this is a sort of global geometry Langlands. And, and, and as kind of the hinted by Sasha, uh, this is kind of not like kind of the correct as written, there, there needs to be modification, and that's also kind of subtlety one can deal with. Okay. So let me say uh, what I hinted in the, at the end of my third introduction. Um, so this A twist, TKFT, uh, again, kind of I, I was kind of using this TKFT language, but we realized that actually we cannot because uh, we, we are actually seeing sort of algebraic dependence. Uh, so it's not really TKFT in the usual sense. But uh, you can compute uh, in this kind of equations motion in this naive way, and then also take this category of geometric quantization in the naive way. Then, in some cases, uh, this uh, T of G of V has a mirror theory of known form, namely T G shift V shift. In this case, we can write down this category of geometric quantization uh, through this equations motion, like really uh, in this way, without much difficulty. But that's already kind of giving uh, sort of new conjectures. And we made this conjecture, and uh, 
uh, Tudor, Nick, and Justin are actually kind of the saying a lot about sort of the properties of, of this, uh, this conjecture. Uh, although we were unaware, un, unaware of this uh, work, uh, it seems that a sort of a very version of uh, this uh, conjecture or kind of related things or it seems to be kind of known by kind of the combination of the work of this, uh, these three. So uh, I was confused about the notation. So, so you're assuming that there's some kind of dual which looks like also, which also comes from a group in a representation. I mean, so I'm confused about, so you have G and V and then, uh, so, I mean, uh, uh, and then, you know, to write this equality, I mean, you have to have this V, v shriek and G shriek, which in principle usually would not exist, right? That's right. That's, I'm, saying, I'm saying that sometimes uh, this has a mirror 3D. Oh, yeah. In that case, okay. problem on a gate screen is uh, proving the abelian case, I heard. No? Maybe. Yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's right. Uh, uh, and like I hinted uh, at the end of the introduction, there are these two different approaches. And first approach is kind of really giving this uh, uh, say, Cronbridge algebra, and in the same way, we just kind of constructed line operators. But you can certainly do, uh, construct these things from this, uh, say, 4D point of view. I didn't really use kind of 4D point of view kind of the, uh, much for, for the last slide. And uh, like a lot of them, I think kind of the, Justin is going to explain more about this. And let me just kind of, the, uh, kind of the provide some ingredients for that. So, Gaio Witten says that uh, 3D equal 4 theory with flavor symmetry G defines a boundary condition uh, with gauge group G. Well, boundary condition of this 4D theory with the gauge group G. And uh, these uh, dualities of boundary conditions are un understood, like in, in examples. So what do we mean by a boundary condition? Uh, for that, let me explain this. So equations motion on M is uh, especially on a class closed M manifold, is uh, has a minus one shifted symplectic, minus one shifted symplectic structure, but that's actually not always the case. Um, if M is not closed, if ha it has a boundary, uh, then what we have is uh, equations of motion on this uh, boundary manifold, namely codimension one manifold, is uh, symplectic, namely zero shifted symplectic, and we also know that uh, this uh, natural map uh, is uh, Lagrangian. This is sort of a general uh, fact and ex expectation and sort of the examples kind of that work. So if you had another Lagrangian of uh, this phase space, say, then by thinking of this fiber product, I'm actually thinking of Lagrangian intersection of uh, this. EOM of M is Lagrangian here, B is Lagrangian here by definition. So by taking fiber product, you actually have uh, minus one shift disinfectic object again. So this motivates a definition, a classical boundary condition is a Lagrangian of this phase space. And given this, maybe you can read this better now. Uh, EOM M, this boundary D, is uh, moduli space solutions to equations of motion on M, which satisfy this boundary condition on the boundary. That's how you read this fiber product. And uh, this physics uh, assertion is going to be uh, used uh, for, say, our work and Justin's talk uh, using this claim, namely, the 3D theory, 3D n equal 4 theory of interest has HT, A, B twist. 4D theory also have this HT, A, B twist. And apparently maybe they are like not related uh, for, for this kind of physics argument, but the claim is that, uh, the name in the kind of HT twist of 3D and core 4 theory with flavor symmetry defines a boundary theory of HT twist of 4D and core 4 theory and so on. So they are kind of compatible in this way. Okay, thanks. More questions for Phil? This is a dual case equivalence given by some. Holomorphic, 
I mean, there. I mean, there is a kernel, but only in sort of the sense that Sasha was saying that there was a Langlands kernel, where, like, if you know how symplectic duality works, you can. No, 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 but if you have actual finite dimensional symplectic or break symplectic. No, but uh, see, the problem is it's not an equivalence between all categories. Once it's only also it's not an equivalence. It's it's causal duality. So so the is that you can see that some kind of some kind. Of, I mean, it really kind of <laughs> works on some kind of restrictive setting. So so you have to define some some kind of category O of modules over the quantization. And then, and then the same for the dual, and then these categories are not equivalent, but they're casual dual. So, so in other words, so the, one thing in order to say that they're casual dual, they have to define additional grading on that category, which is somehow a priori, it's not clear where it's coming, where it's, where it would be coming from. And uh, so, so, so secretly, this, you have to define, define the right category of modules, then define additional grading, and then, and then somehow do all the sequence, which sort of changes the homological grading with this additional grading. So, so, it's, so it's not really equivalence. No, no, but there will can be, for example, potential bundle to whatever. No, even in case of potential bundle, so can potential bundle to the flag variety of you know, P1. I mean, even there, yeah, even there, that's like... Like, like this, because the, the functor exchanges simples and projectives, ah, okay. and like basically projectives have no X. Right? Ah, like, yeah, so, so this, this functor does not preserve homological grading, so it exchanges homological grading for something else. What, what's the other gradient? Is there like some physical interpretation of this? Uh, I mean, it is an R symmetry, but I think people also think it's supposed to come from some kind of Hodge theory. I mean, in all the examples, the way that you see the grading um, comes from looking at like mixed Hodge modules. Like basically, in the case that your theory is a cotangent bundle, so the quantization is demoduled, then you also have a theory of mixed Hodge modules. And then like the Hodge grading is the, and it ends up being pure, um, or the, the grading on all the home spaces ends up being pure, or the Hodge structure on all the Hodge home spaces ends up being pure, and then the, it's the Hodge grading that gets. Yeah, I think physically it's called R symmetry. Think so again?